Hey everyone, my name is Andrick Langfield, and in today's video, what I wanna do is do a simple color grade tutorial for you guys. I know a couple of you guys have asked how I do my colors, so in today's video, I wanna do a very simple tutorial that you guys can follow along. Actually, I'll include the link in the description below. I'll include the video that we're gonna be using to edit today, so if you wanna download that, pause the video, download that first, and then you guys can actually follow along with me with the actual clip that I'll be using today. So I'll be editing in DaVinci Resolve. I'll be doing it in the color tab there. So if you don't use DaVinci Resolve, maybe you can follow along with the principles, but most of it will be pretty heavy in DaVinci Resolve. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna keep it pretty simple today, just using more of like a four to five um, node tree base. So I'm gonna keep it simple there. Usually what I'll do when I do color grading, I'll use a software called Dehancer. I actually made a video on that. So I'll include it up here if you are interested in watching that video on what I currently like to use. But I won't be using that today just because I know not everybody has Dehancer or wants to purchase that. Another thing I won't be using are any LUTs. If I don't use Dehancer, then I'll use my custom LUTs that I've made, which are not public right now. but. I won't be using my LUTs just because not everybody has those. So I'll just be using just what comes into DaVinci Resolve. No LUTs, no extra plugins, just what comes there. So I can show you that you can make something really nice coming from there. So the first unique thing you're gonna do is either get yourself your clip or download the clip that is included there below. And then we're gonna jump right into the computer and get started. All right, so welcome to my computer here. We have our clip imported here and we're gonna get started by creating our node tree. Now, one thing I do have that you might have different is my luminance mix is set to zero. I set mine to zero because I like to control each individual channel uh, by itself. If you have this to 100, you'll notice that when you move one, it moves the others too. So that's just a personal preference. You can do either one, but if you wanna follow along like I'm doing it today, it will be set to zero, just so you know. Now, let's go ahead and get started by creating our tree, our node tree. The first thing I start with always is my adjustments. I'm talking about white balance, my exposure, all those kind of things that happen before all the looks and cool things happen. So this is my color correction, not my color grading, my color correction. So I'm gonna call this my adjustments. My next node is gonna be my look. This is gonna be creating the look, more of the colors, um, the skewing of colors, what colors I want in the shadows, midtones, and the highlights. So this I'm gonna be called my look. Then my next one, by the way, I'm adding nodes here by the control, is it Alt S? By Alt S, you can add new nodes like that. My next one here is gonna be my skin. So if I need to do any adjustments to my skin tones, if I wanna do my skin tones less saturated or more saturated, that's gonna happen in here. I will also have this separate from any other uh, adjustments that I do in case I need to do something like a qualifier or a window. So I'm gonna have that separate and I'm gonna add a parallel node by doing Alt P and that parallel node will be anything other than my skin tone. So maybe like my coat or my sweater here or the plants in the background or this kind of little haze here that I've got this little yellow haze. This is a, I was doing a vintage lens test so that's why uh, I'm testing the lens here. You can see a little bit of a haze here. So I wanna control that, that little yellow. I might do that here. I'll call this my Alt. And these are gonna be any saturation or hue changes that I wanna do for the image after the look. Then after that, I'm gonna add another node. This one's gonna be called Glow. And the last node here is gonna be called Save Black and White. Save B and White. Okay, so now this Save Black and White here, I'll explain in a minute here, and you'll see why it's important. I'm not sure actually what it's called, but I'll show you how to do it and why I do it at the end. So one thing I noticed right off the bat is I'd like more focus on the middle. It is pretty evenly lit. As you can see here, all the information is kind of all clumped in the middle. So I'm gonna add one node before by doing Shift S, and this one's gonna be my vignette. I like adding my vignette before anything else happens because typically when you shoot with a lens that causes vignette, that's happening before it even hits uh, DaVinci Resolve, obviously because it's being um, done in camera. So I'm gonna add it before it does anything, and I like to do my vignettes a little different. I like to come in here, add my circle, zoom out, just like that, and then I like to feather it there. I like doing it like this because then you can uh, control it a little bit more. Um, than the one that comes in the effects. Once you do that, you wanna flip this over like that by clicking this one, just so it's inverted, and then I'm gonna go into my curves. In my curves, I just like grabbing this and just bringing it down. That's too much, obviously, so I'm just gonna bring it down just a little bit like that, 
And just by doing that, I noticed that maybe I wanna bring it in a little bit more just so it focuses on my face a bit more, just like that. So let's take a look at before and after. So it's just very subtle. Maybe I went a little too far, so I'm gonna bring it back up a little bit. So there we go. The next one is gonna be my adjustments. So my adjustments like white balance or exposure, mostly. Now I like to separate my adjustments and my look just in case I mess up on my look. I can just right click and say reset and then I have no problems. I don't have to readjust my adjustments or sometimes I'm doing something way down the line here and I need to come back and fix my exposure. That way I don't have to fix my exposure within the look or the skin tones. I can just go to my adjustments and, and then change the exposure right in the adjustment layer here. So let's go ahead and do that. I like to use my printer light, my keys here. So I think if you go to color, you can select your printer light hotkeys and then you can actually use your numpad. So that's what I'm gonna do today. But basically what you're doing is you're bringing your exposure down by bringing your offset down like this. I'm gonna start bringing my exposure all the way down to basically where it almost starts clipping my shadows, which is right about here, as you can see. Now, if you do clip your shadows, I like to save, I'm gonna, put, I'm gonna clip them actually on purpose today right about there. I'm gonna save a little bit of that information by going into my uh, curves here and just my LS and just slide it up just a little bit. I don't know if you can tell here, I'll zoom in. By bringing this one, you can actually control that bottom end. So I'm just gonna bring it up like that. That's perfect. The next thing I notice here is that it's pretty red heavy. You'll see that it's very orange and quite yellow. So I'm gonna bring that over to the blue a little bit but not too much because I do like to use my offset and printer light keys just to control a little bit of the white balance errors. So I'm gonna bring that down by bringing my, my, my red down. As you can see, by bringing my red down, I'm introducing more blues and greens. So maybe right in the middle somewhere, maybe like that and add a little bit tiny blur of blue, something like that. So those are my adjustments so far, as you can see already significant difference. As you can see, I'm aiming for most of the information to be in this lower part of my uh, scopes, okay? So the next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add a tiny bit of contrast just because it is HLG2 um, that I shot it in, not S-Log or anything like that, so I don't need too much contrast or uh, CST. If you do need to do a um, color transform node, you can do that by adding to effects and then just change it to Rec 709. And basically everything else I do after that will be identical. So that is something that you can do if you're shooting like an S log or something like this. Add a little bit of contrast I'm gonna do and a tiny bit of saturation, maybe 53, maybe just a little bit. And I'm liking that. So before and after. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna be looking at is my skin tones. As you can see by hovering, you can see on the right side that my skin tones are living in the 700 almost. IRE. So I'm going to bring that down a little bit closer to 600. That's just a personal preference. So I'm going to do that by sliding this one down. I think I'm liking how that's looking. I'm going to leave it there for now and come back to it if I need to add anything else. Let's do now our look. Our look is going to be where we add colors and make things look different or uh, unique. This is sometimes where people will add a LUT a creative LUT or we'll add a plugin like Dehancer. This is kind of where I add those different looks right in here. But today we're just gonna be creating one real quick and this is gonna be done by lift, gamma and gain just by pushing and pulling. So I'm gonna start by lift by pulling towards my blues. So I like to add a little bit of the blue and green area in my shadows and don't be afraid to pull it a little bit extra. You can see here it looks awful so far, but we're gonna, we're gonna actually complement that by adding some complementary colors into my midtone. So I'm gonna push this one towards those oranges and greens. That's too much. Bring it back a little bit. Now I think there should maybe too much blue here. All right, so there's a before and after. You can see it adds a little bit of a different look to it. Maybe I want a little bit more green in the shadow, so I'm gonna add a little bit more there. Maybe that's too much. So I'm gonna compensate that by adding a little bit more reds and yellows and purples, actually, in my midtones. There we go. So there's my look so far. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. There's before and there's after. We've already gotten really far with this look. Now at this point, it's a good place to show you why I do my safe black and whites. 
You'll see that in my coat here, I'm starting to get lots of greens and different colors in my shadows. Now, I don't mind it if it's on my coat here, this is okay, but I like to keep my blacks pretty clean. And this is what I'm gonna do with my save black and white. I'm gonna go over to my curves and to this one here, the lumens versus saturation. I'm just gonna add in a little point there and grab this. I'm gonna bring that down all the way to nothing. I might actually add another one here and just delete that one so it curves down. And I'm gonna do the same thing for my whites. Now what this is doing here, it's bringing your saturation from those black spots back to zero. So you can't actually tell much what's happening there, but if I put this one and turned it into this one, you'll notice that I'm clamping those colors where there's lots of colors here, and clamping them and bringing them back to this kind of curve here. So I'm just cleaning it up a little bit. That's all I'm doing. You can see here, if I move this input over to the right, you can see that as I move it to the right, it clamps more colors, and this one, it's just basically cleaning up your blacks. So I'm gonna put that there, and it's just kind of a nice safe way to keep your blacks black and your whites white. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do here is go into my skin tones. My skin tones are gonna to be here, so I'm gonna go into my curves and go over to my hue versus saturation. So one thing I like to do is start and drag like this so that I can collect all that data. And once I let go of my mouse, it'll grab all that data and that's basically everything that is sampled. So I'm gonna add a little bit of saturation to my skin tones, maybe right there. Okay, and maybe I'd like to add a little bit of reds. So what I'm gonna do is go into this other one here, my hue versus hue, same thing, sample all my skin. And I'm gonna add a little bit more of those reds, these more purples, more magentas. There we go. So before and after, maybe it went too far. So I'm gonna bring it back just a little bit. Before and after. Yeah, I'm liking that a lot better. All right, so the next thing is I'm gonna do my alt. So my alt might be my hat, my green plant here, my hoodie, um, anything else that I wanna control, I'm gonna be doing my alt. So just for explanation here, I'm gonna do my plant. So I'm gonna click that and there's my green. I'm gonna spread it across a little bit, make this a little bit wider. So I grab more and let's start shifting that towards, what do we want, more oranges or more of those blues? I kinda like those blues, so I'm gonna bring it down towards those blues. A little bit more maybe. There, I'm liking that. Perfect, now the next one is glow. Now I really like glow because it adds this kind of diffusion effect over the whole image. As you can see, you just gotta search glow in your effects and grab your glow and drag it over. Now. Let's make this a little bit bigger. What we're gonna be doing here is go into your composition type and you're gonna change that to soft light. It's gonna darken it all up, but don't worry, we're gonna to go to your threshold and bring it all the way to the left and you're gonna just play around where you like it. I'm gonna put a little bit, maybe 83. And then my spread, I'm not gonna spread it all the way and I'm also not gonna have this kind of weird effect. So I'm gonna bring my spread to where it's kind of soft right there maybe. And I'm gonna bring my opacity all the way down to zero and dial it in as much as I want. I think I like that. Let's do it before and after. And you can see that just adds a very nice finishing touch to your image. Now, do keep in mind when you do that, it does add some saturation. So right now I'm looking at my image and it looks a little too saturated. So like I said, we can just go back to my adjustments and to my primaries here and change my saturation right back down to 50 where I had it before. So now let's go ahead and go back to the beginning and go through every single step and show you what everyone does. So let's start with vignette. Then we did our adjustments. This was our exposure and white balance. Then we did our look. This was our creative look. Then we did their skins. And we did our alts, which was our plant. And then we added this glow to finish it off. And then we controlled our blacks and whites. And there is your look, before and after. Well, thanks so much for watching. I hope that video was a help to you guys. Let me know down in the comments below if it was or if it wasn't, or what other things you guys would like to do. I really enjoy making this color grading tutorials for you guys, so let me know what other things you might have questions about. Maybe I'll make more color grading tutorials, more advanced ones, or other things that we're gonna be looking into. And if you guys aren't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. 
thank you so much for watching my videos and subscribing and commenting. You guys are awesome, and I'll see you guys in next week's video. Bye.